This video was sponsored by Loot Crate. Stay to the end to watch an unboxing and use the link in the description to sign up. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and welcome to my list of the top 10 trippiest video games. Today we have only one rule for this list, no musical rhythm games, because there's just way too many of them. Alright, give me just one second, I gotta get in the right mood for this. What were we talking about again? Katamari Damacy. Really, this should be much higher, but I've talked about it 10,000 times. I tried. I tried so hard to find 10 games more trippy than this, but it couldn't be done. I am but a mortal man. Just look at it. It's Katamari freaking Damacy. Pick any version. I'm tripping balls just thinking about Katamari right now. So now that we have that covered, let's move on to some new stuff. Feel the magic for the Nintendo DS, or as it's known in Europe and Australia, Project Rub. Uh, you know what? I need a nap. Break time. Feel the magic is a strange little game that involves blue hair guy trying to impress blue dress girl, and he attempts to do this by playing a bunch of random, absurd mini games. Seriously, I don't know how they even came up with some of these. There's a bunch of dudes blowing out candles. <laughs> escaping from the stomach of a giant snake. <laughs> and some kind of Harry Potter-esque wizard duel in space, I don't know. <laughs> The very first mission involves you attempting to get live goldfish out of a guy's stomach. I considered turning the game off at this point, but I still needed some more footage, you know how it is. But in all seriousness, it kind of reminds me of WarioWare, and it's actually pretty fun. Except for the parts where you have to rub the girl for a long time. Those parts are kind of creepy. Proteus is a really beautiful game. You could argue that it's a bit overused, but I'm a big fan of the pixelated visual style. Especially when it's used in this sort of 3D first person setting. The pixel graphics with the bright vivid colors, not to mention the ominous melancholy music, makes Proteus feel almost more like a dream than a game. Hey! Oh sorry, I didn't mean to startle you or anything. But you have 15 seconds to close this video. 15, 14, 13, huh. 12. That's weird. Get up. I gotta believe. I know I said at the start that I wasn't gonna include music in rhythm games, but I'm gonna make an exception with Parappa the Rapper 2. I do what I want. Unless you don't like it, in which case I will immediately stop whatever it is, and I'm really, really sorry. I'll never do it again. Please don't unsubscribe. There are a lot of trippy music rhythm games out there, which is a big reason why I decided to exclude them from this list. But Parappa the Rapper is so unique that I just couldn't leave it off. This game is more of an experience than anything else. You're watching cutscenes, listening to the songs, and going on a crazy but charming adventure with wacky story premises, lyrics, animations, and character movements, being rapped at by bearded ghosts, karate onions, and having a freak out in outer space with a giant purple cockroach guy. Oh yeah, and every now and then you press buttons, I guess. It's not very hard, so you don't have to think about it too much, which is perfect for if you, you know, is a fun game. Hey everybody, I got a new camera. What do you think? It's a Game Boy camera. <laughs> The visual quality, I think it really complements my facial features, so I think I'm gonna use it for every video from now on. Uh, 
Uh-oh. I think I broke it. That's right, the Game Boy camera. Now you can take pictures of yourself wherever you go. Who needs that old garbage? Good golly, what a handsome fellow. Slap some pictures of Mario on there, or maybe a Bulbasaur or a Pikachu in the corner, and... Great! It's also really trippy. Something about the dated visuals and the strange music makes it almost creepy in a way. And don't even get me started on the freaky faces hidden in the game. And if you're still not convinced, just take a look at the start menu. Just try and stare at that for five minutes without going crazy. I love Geometry Wars. It's got lots of pretty shapes and colors. And while it doesn't match up rhythmically, which would instantly bar it from entry on this list for some arbitrary reason that I made up, the music really fits the game and adds a lot to the overall experience and kind of makes it trippy and stuff. That was a good take. I'm going to go with that one. It does kind of remind me of some of the other music rhythm games that I would have otherwise included. You fly around, shoot stuff, collect the green dots, and get points. I live and breathe points. Screw you, Todd. I'll get you one day. It's pretty simple simple, but that's not a bad thing. The further you get, the more curveballs the game throws at you, but it's the same basic idea throughout. It's the kind of game where you can just relax, melt into your chair, and zone out. Nice. Oh wow, floating. I did, did, didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> but I thought that I was actually, what was I doing? I was like shooting some, some shapes or some uh, uh, squares and oh, it's my sense, why can I even float anyway? I don't remember being able to do that. I don't think I was supposed to. 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 Oh no, not this game. Caution Seaman for the Dreamcast. It's like Hey You Pikachu, except somehow even more annoying, not to mention infinitely weirder. I'd like to think that it's pretty obvious why this game made the list, but I guess I'll explain anyway. You see, my father was the king of Egypt back in its third dynasty, and that, my this, father was a the whole the guy, the, the whole oh, thing. A lot of you may be familiar with this game already, as was I when I started playing it, but you just don't get the full experience of how ridiculous this game is until you play it for yourself. You got some eggs. You got a Nautilus. The Nautilus eats the eggs. Eggs slowly and painfully kill the Nautilus from the inside and then launch out of his body in a loud bloody mess. You know, like like normal video games, right? Mario, go, Pikachu. Oh no, he's dead. And there's also clicking. A whole lot of clicking. And that's just the start of it. It only gets weirder when the seamen all grow up and start talking and even eating each other with giant tentacle things. Once you begin raising seamen, you are expected to assume complete responsibility for the care and upbringing of a living, breathing creature. So before you begin with the initial setup procedure, you are strongly recommended to double check with yourself that you are mentally prepared to assume this important responsibility. Hmm. I could live without it. Earlier I mentioned that Proteus is like playing through a dream. At number three, we have a little game called Gabal Screen. I would also say that Gabal Screen is very reminiscent of a dream, except this time, it's more of a fever dream. Oh no, I'm a shoe. Why am I a shoe? What's going on? Why is this happening? Angel babies. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. Gabal Screen is, believe it or not, a licensed game for the PlayStation. It was produced by a guy named Tetsuya Komoru, a very prominent figure in the Japanese music industry in the 90s. I'm not quite sure I understand everything, but I'm pretty sure they're trying to get you to buy music albums or something. The whole game consists of this flying shoe floating around and watching a bunch of nonsensical things happen, and then sometimes the nonsensical things that happen result in you getting a CD. Each level is named after a song, and as you collect more CDs in the level, more pieces of a song start playing in the background. At the end of each level, you get to watch a music video. When I first started playing, I wasn't that into it, but the further I went, the more I needed the CDs. I need more. More CDs. I've got to catch them all. My life won't be complete until I buy every CD ever produced by Tetsu Yukamaru. My life has a new meaning. 
If you want to see a bit more of this game, you can check out a playthrough I did on PVG Gameplay in the link below. Thanks, bye! My Dreams Collection. My Dreams Collection. My Dreams Guys, I did it! I finally played a Sonic game, and I don't think I'll ever be the same again. Sonic Dreams Collection is a fan-made Sonic parody game, and to say that it's unsettling would be an understatement. There's four small games included. First, Make My Sonic, which allows you to customize Sonic. You can also do this. There's also Eggman Origin, which is apparently an actual game of some sort, but I couldn't figure it out. Then there's the main two games, Sonic Movie Maker and My Roommate Sonic. In Sonic Movie Maker, you make Sonic movies? But not really. Each stage gives you props, a camera, and you record things for a few seconds in order to make a film. You then watch your masterpiece in a small theater. It's really weird. But it gets even weirder in My Roommate Sonic. I'm not even sure what to say about it. I'm not sure what I could say about it. All I know is I really want it to be over now. Please. Please make it stop. I'll do anything you want. Anything. Just please. End it. Just end it all now! At number one, not too surprisingly, we have LSD Dream Emulator for the PlayStation. I'm not too convinced LSD Dream Emulator is a real game. Despite factual evidence of the contrary, I'm not convinced. I'm pretty sure I've just been transported to some kind of alternate dimension that I have no capacity to comprehend. That seems infinitely more likely than someone actually creating this acid trip of an experience and then releasing it for public consumption. This game is straight up disturbing and unsettling. And I kinda love it. I've never played a game that I was so intrigued by wanting to explore and see everything you could possibly see while at the same time also feeling incredibly freaked out and wanting to turn the game off and sleep for a couple weeks until I forgot all of it. I would tell you what LSD Dream Emulator was about, what the point or goal of the game is. I'd tell you anything about it, really, if I actually knew. Is there even a point to this game? Is there a goal? I've played for hours and I have yet to figure anything out. I just walked around, saw a bunch of trippy psychedelic things happening, some of which literally made my jaw drop. And every now and then there's some weird cutscene that uses real live action footage or something. Sometimes the game not only made me feel unnerved, but just straight up unwelcome. Side effects of playing LSD Dream Emulator may include dry mouth, nausea, decreased sex drive, decreased appetite, decreased will to live, stuffy nose, runny nose, no nose at all, spontaneous and unconscious political activism, constipation, inability to sweat, even more constipation, inability to control the movements of the left side of your body, numbness, weakness, irrational mood changes, sudden spontaneous death, severe vomiting, severe vomiting for hours after death, diarrhea, sudden loss of vision, sudden loss of consciousness, sudden loss of life, sudden loss of everything you hold. This episode of Peanut Butter Gamer is sponsored by Loot Crate. For less than $20 a month, you get four to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one-of-a-kind items, and more. And every crate includes an exclusive t-shirt that you can't get anywhere else. You have until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific time to subscribe and receive that month's crate, and when the cutoff happens, it's over. This month's theme is Versus, celebrating some of the greatest rivalries in pop culture, the Dark Knight versus Man of Steel, Alien versus Predator, etc. This month's exclusive items include something you can display, something you can wear, and something you can use, as well as the usual exclusive tea and loot crate pin. Use the link in the description below to subscribe today. Don't do drugs or use knives. Ever. So it looks like this this is themed dead here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can probably see that here. Uh, I was going to go ahead and pull the shirt out. And here you go, Todd. I'm going to hand this to Todd. And Todd's, Todd's going to kind of just hand me this up. You want to come? You want to come wave, Todd? Yeah. Hey. Uh, they can they can see your hand. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That Todd's helping me out here. So uh, this is the T-shirt, and it is. Oh, it's a. Oh, okay. It's a Deadpool T-shirt, which which goes with the theme of dead. That's pretty cool. What's up there? What is he saying? Tacos. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty cool. Another Deadpool uh, figure here. This is actually pretty cool. Look at that. That is pretty cool. That's cool. Let me get close up on there. I try to get it in focus. Because he's like dodging some explosion or something. That or it's a really, really <laughs> bad fart. <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably the former, but hey, who knows? What is this? So it's soap on a rope. It's walking dead ear soap. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. You know, I'm actually I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna put this in our shower and not tell my wife. 
<laughs> and then she'll just be weirded out. I'm just gonna wear it around my neck like a necklace. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it on now. These are just like figures, I guess? Are these like blind boxes? Okay, yeah, okay, let's open it up, see what we got. Don't use knives! What do we got? Oh, we got, <laughs> he's, he's not put together. But uh, let me let me put them together real quick. You know, who is though these days? <laughs> yeah, I know, he really has everything together, I don't. All right, I got him put together there. Let me get a zoom in on him. Oh, that's the fo focus, there we go. Can you see him? This is the pin that you get. Oh, sweet. So this is pretty cute. Let me show, let me zoom in on this as well. Uh, this is uh, one of the loot crate pins that they give you. So this is like a loot crate as a zombie. Oh, I gotta put the shirt on too. How does it look? I think you look great. Thank you. And also, now Thank you for lying. Easy, <laughs> it's very easy to understand what you're thinking about. Now. Yeah. Pretty much always thinking of tacos. Tacos are pizza, one or the other. So yeah, if you want to sign up for Loot Crate, there should be a link in the description below. And if you want the next month's versus box, you have to subscribe by the 19th, or before the 19th. Which is specifically the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific. So you have until the 19th at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. specific. 9 p.m. Pacific time. So that's when, that's when you can do it. So go sign up for the link below. And thanks so much. Say bye, Todd. Bye. Bye bye. Get some tacos today and tacos. sign up for Loot Crate. Hey guys, I'm already running late, so I'm gonna keep this short. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, you should subscribe. If you wanna help me out by liking and sharing this video, I really appreciate it. And also, you can follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and all my other social media things. You know what I mean. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye! Also, check out the Gabal screen video on PPG Gameplay. All right, bye-bye.